The Kit Kat Club is proud to present a beautiful young lady from England. She is so beautiful, so charming, so talented that I have asked her to marry me. And there is only one thing standing in our way. My wife! <laughs> I bring to you the toast of my first. Let me think. The 
sea is calm tonight. The tide is full and the moon lies fair upon this grace. On the French coast, the light gleams and is gone. The cliffs of England stand glimmering and vast out in the tranquil bay. Come to the window. Sweet is the night air. Oh, yes, yes, don't stop, please. I'm afraid that's all I know. My name is Cliff Bradshaw. I come from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You know where that is? Such a beautiful land. Well, it's 90 miles west of Philadelphia. May I come to your table? Oh, I see. Well, I don't think that's possible at this time. As a matter of fact, I rather doubt it. Ten seconds in which to lose your wives. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year!
You know what is the trouble with English? It is not like German. It is not an easy language. It is not formal. Or one must memorize 50,000 words, or one cannot speak it correctly. Either one must memorize, or one cannot speak. Aha. Either or. <clears throat> well, the time is now finished, huh? I'm in no hurry. But the lesson is for one hour. Another pupil will be waiting. <laughs> what other pupil? No other pupil. Then uh, I make a suggestion. We call my lady friend. She brings over a lady friend for you, Elsa, a genuine placard. <laughs> not tonight, Ernst. Uh, but you have not seen this Elsa. Hot stuff. In one minute, I guarantee, you will be making a pass after her. <laughs> a pass at her. Aha, pass at her. The trouble is, I've got a date tonight. With a typewriter? What can one do with a typewriter? Not very much lately. Then uh, come with me. We will make uh, large whoopee. Uh, for one thing, I've got a budget, and it allows for a very small whoopee. Unfortunately. Uh, well, then uh, you will be my guest. <laughs> Thanks. But... You know, it is difficult getting used to a poor American. I let you in on a secret. Uh, there is no need for just poverty. Yeah? If you are willing, I show you a most excellent way to supplement your income. Doing what? Or by making occasional business trip to Paris. A few days at most. Uh, it uh, will pay you well, extremely well. Come in. A Bradshaw, there is a young lady to see you. A young lady in a fur coat. A young lady? A uh, Fraulein Bowles. Bowles? Ask her to come in. You are acquaintances with Fraulein Bowles from uh, London, perhaps? From the Kit Kat Club, last night. Last night? You sure are one snappy burger. <laughs> Clear. Ernst, darling. Oh, it's lovely, Fraulein Schneider, all these wonderful old pieces. Do get in and get my bag. Just put it in. Where I'll unpack later. No, unpack? Oh, I'll never... only be staying temporarily. Oh, I'm sorry. I cannot permit it. It is not possible. How much are you paying? Uh, 50 marks. But it is not the money. 60. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not permissible. 70. But this room is worth 100 marks, more than 100. 80. Uh, 85. And now, please, make yourself cozy, Mrs. Bradshaw. <coughs> Such a to-do. I will see you on Friday night for the next lesson, but I tell you something. I think I am taking from you the wrong kind of lesson. <laughs> Sally, what's this all about? Did you guess? I was terrified. Were you? What if you'd thrown me out? Imagine how that would feel, being thrown out twice in one day. You mean Max? Dear Max, and you know whose fault it was. Why, if you hadn't come into the Kit Kat Club and been so dreadfully attractive and recited poetry. You know what I'd love? A spot of gin. Gin? You've got some. I mean, I think one must. No, oh, I haven't got any gin. Oh, well, prairie oysters then. Prairie oysters? Oh, I practically live on them. It's just a raw egg whooshed around in some Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Heaven for a hangover. Well, I haven't got a hangover. That's quite a coke. <laughs> Should be. Cost me all I had. Little did I dream how soon I'd be unemployed. Well, what about your job at the club? Well, that's rather complicated. You see, one of the owners of the club... Uh, dear Max. Oh, you're divinely intuitive. I do hope I'm not going to fall madly in love with you. You're not in the theater in any way. Uh-uh. Well, then you're safe, more or less. Though I do believe a woman can become a truly Great actress until she's had several passionate affairs and had her heart broken. I should have let Ernst pay my cab fare. He's got all that money from Paris. From Paris? Oh, yes, he smuggles it in for some political party. <laughs> Ernst is in politics? You didn't know. He goes to Paris about once a month and brings back pots of money. Well, he has to smuggle it in? Oh, it's terribly dangerous, but 
Ernst is so resourceful. He's found the customs people almost never check the bags of non-Germans. So, before they get to the border, he finds some innocent-looking Englishman or American. It's hard to imagine an American that gullible. <laughs> Pause and Beinbrook. It means neck and leg break. It's supposed to stop it happening. Though I doubt it does. I doubt you can stop anything from happening. <laughs> Look, it's about time we... Drink! It's amazing. You know what this tastes like? Peppermint. <laughs> <laughs> it's your toothbrush, Glass. I should have rinsed it. Is this your novel? It's in German. Mein Kampf. It's not my novel. I thought I should know something about German politics. But why? You're an American. You know, I've, I've never known a novelist before. But I'd be allowed to watch you work. Look, I don't, I don't think I can work with someone else on the premises. But I'm hardly noticeable, really. I'll go out when you're writing and take long, invigorating walks. In the middle of the night. And there's another thing. I am not a prude. At least I don't think I'm a prude. No, 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 no. I, I've got work to do. I can never explain this arrangement. It's too peculiar. Peculiar? No, not in the least. I think people are people. I really do, Cliff, don't you? I don't think they should be made to apologize for anything they do. For example, if I should paint my fingernails green, and it happens I do paint them green, well, if someone should ask me why, I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty, that's what I reply. So if someone should ask about you and me one day, you have two alternatives. You can either say, yes, it's true, we're living in delicious sin. Or you can simply tell them the truth and say, I met this perfectly marvelous girl in this perfect wonderful town as I lifted a glass to the start of a marvelous year. Before you knew what she called on the phone, inviting. Next moment I was no longer alone, but sat reciting some perfectly beautiful verse in my charming American style. How I dazzled a senses was truly no less than a crime. Now I'm this perfectly marvelous girl in my perfectly beautiful room. And we're living together and having a marvelous time. Look, Sally, I don't think it'll work out. You're much too distracting. Distracting? No. Inspiring? She tells me perfectly marvelous Tales of her thrillingly scandalous life, which I'll probably use as a chapter or two in my book. And since my stay in Berlin was to force creation, what luck to fall on a fabulous source of stimulation. And perfectly marvelous, too, is her perfect agreement to be just as still. Remember how many there's supposed to be? May I have three marks? That includes the tip. Thank you. No, quite seriously, Cliff. Please, may I stay? Sally, I can't afford Only it. Only for a day or two, please. I met this truly remarkable girl in this really incredible town and she skillfully managed to talk her way into my room oh, I have a terrible feeling I said